Why Men with Dark Intentions Destroyed the Library of Alexandria by Arjun Walia Ancient civilizations are a fascinating topic, and it is clear that we have so much to learn from them when it comes to our way of life, our health, our technology, science, nature, consciousness, and the nature of reality itself. Understanding these rhythms and cycles of time helps us to understand that our modern civilizations are not the first to emerge, nor are they necessarily more advanced than the previous ones that have come and gone. Be it information in the form of written texts or advanced ancient structures, like the Kailas Temple, one of 32 cave temples and monasteries located within the Ellora Caves in India, their knowledge, how they acquired it, and how they constructed their masterpieces remains a complete mystery. With all of our modern day technology, knowledge and wisdom, there is still no way to accomplish some of the feats of civilizations past. Feats that required an extremely advanced understanding of mathematics, physics and more. There is evidence that many ancient achievements required an extremely advanced form of technology as well, and many examples to prove these assertions. Sometimes it seems we are relearning much of the knowledge kept by the ancient world. This is exactly why the burning of the Library of Alexandria was such a great tragedy. It was one of the greatest libraries in human history, holding a vast archive of manuscripts and books from all over the ancient world, and what our ancients would have themselves considered ancient. The Library of Alexandria was built after the famous Alexander the Great, who conquered Egypt and acquired knowledge from all parts of the globe. From east to west, the teachings of multiple civilizations throughout human history up to that time could be found in the Great Library of Alexandria. The Great Library of Alexandria was located in Alexandria, Egypt, and was dedicated to the Muses, the Nine Goddesses of the Arts. Alexandria, Egypt was considered the capital of knowledge and learning, in part because of the Great Library. The library was part of a larger research intuition called the Musayim of Alexandria, where many of the most famous thinkers of the ancient world studied. The library was created by Ptolemy, who was a Macedonian general and the successor of Alexander the Great. The books and scrolls contained in this library touch upon every subject that concerns humanity from health, science, and astronomy, to geology, philosophy, mysticism, magic, knowledge of the spiritual world, and more. Manly P. Hall describes it as follows in The Secret Teachings of All Ages. This magnificent repository of knowledge was destroyed by a series of three fires. It was burned down in approximately 389 AD by Julius Caesar from the Order of Theodosius also known as Theodosius the Great. He was a Roman emperor from 379 AD to 395 AD, ruling over both the eastern and western halves of the Roman Empire. Libraries as such were well known to multiple ancient civilizations in Egypt, Mesopotamia, Asia, Syria, and Greece, who were all very impressed by oriental knowledge. There is literally evidence of Greek individuals visiting Egypt specifically to acquire knowledge. Some say that not all the rolls and manuscripts reported in history to have been burned by Julius Caesar by the Christian mob in 389 AD perished as it is commonly believed, and the story they tell us is the following. At the time of the contest of the throne in 51 BC between Cleopatra and her brother Ptolemy, which contained over 700,000 rolls, all bound in wood and fireproof parchment, was undergoing repairs, and a great portion of the original manuscripts, considered among the most previous, and which were not duplicated, were stored away in the home of one of the librarians. Several hours passed between the burning of the fleet, set on fire by Caesar's order, and the moment when the first building situated near the harbor caught fire, and the librarians aided by several hundred slaves attached to the museum, 
succeeded in saving the most previous of the roles. Manly P. Hall writes that the books that were saved were actually buried in Egypt and in India, and until they are discovered, the modern world must remain in ignorance concerning many great philosophical and mystical truths. The ancient world clearly understood these missing links, the continuity of the pagan mysteries in Christianity. These pagan mysteries, Hall writes, are the heart of mysticism, which actually represents true Christianity. There are persistent rumors that Jesus visited and studied in both Greece and India, and that a coin struck in his honor in India during the first century has been discovered. Early Christian records are known to exist in Tibet, and the monks of the Buddhist monastery in Ceylon still preserve a record which indicates that Jesus sojourned with them and became conversant with their philosophy. Although early Christianity shows every evidence of Oriental influence, this is a subject that the modern church declines to discuss. If it's ever established beyond question that Jesus was an initiate of the pagan Greek or Asiatic mysteries, the effect on the more conservative members of the Christian faith is likely to be cataclysmic. Information like this, among other topics, like life on other planets, and sacred and magical, considered mythical by many. Information about shamanism, magic, and sorcery predate modern Christianity. Different sects of Christianity, after the ancient Romans, created their own version, now condemned these teachings, even though they were embedded within the original doctrines. This is one of the many reasons why the aristocracy of ancient Rome ordered the great library of Alexandria to be destroyed, because it would ruin the foundations of what they were creating, a new religion for man to follow, one whose doctrine contradicted the one prior. This type of religion was forced upon the people, and those who did not follow were subject to death and exile. Anyone who questioned these new doctrines received harsh penalties throughout the ages, especially as time progressed and the expansion of civilization from that point moved forward. The early Christians used every means possible to conceal the pagan origin of their symbols, doctrines, and rituals. They either destroyed the sacred books of other peoples among whom they settled or made them inaccessible to students of comparative philosophy, apparently believing that in this way they could stamp out all the records of the pre-Christian origin of their doctrines. In some cases, the writings of various ancient authors were tampered with, passages of a compromising nature being removed or foreign material interpolated. Conquering the World Before the creation of a certain type of Christianity by ancient Rome, truth seemed to be more apparent, but darkness seemed to have permeated the world of light even prior. Atlantis is a great example, as Plato, among other ancient scholars, told us that the eventual demise of this civilization was brought forth by ego-driven desires that soon developed among them when the Atlantean kings were lured from the pathway of wisdom and virtue. Filled with false ambition, the rulers of Atlantis determined to conquer the gods into his holy habitation and address them. Here Plato's narrative comes to an abrupt end, for the Cretius was never finished. A technologically sophisticated but morally bankrupt evil empire, Atlantis attempts world domination by force. The only thing standing in its way is a relatively small group of spiritually pure, morally principled, and incorruptible peoples. The ancient Athenians. Overcoming overwhelming odds, the Athenians are able to defeat their far more powerful adversary simply through the force of their spirit. Does this sound familiar to you? Plato's Atlantean dialogues are essentially an ancient Greek version of Star Wars. Ken Fetter Professor of Archaeology, taken from his book Frauds, Myths and Mysteries, Science and Pseudoscience in Archaeology. The sacred teachings and artifacts in Atlantis were perverted and used for selfishness by some. These teachings made their way into Egypt and eventually into ancient Greece, 
until the Roman Empire dominated the world and burned the library where many of these teachings were probably held and disseminated their own version of knowledge and truth across the land. Do some of these books lie within the libraries of the Vatican today? If much of the mythical stories we've heard and read about are real, they would indeed bring down the modern-day understanding of religion and spirituality that has been spread by the families of ancient Rome. Are we looking at a cover-up of knowledge regarding what is and have we been deceived? The burning of Alexandria's library was one tragic event involving the destruction of ancient knowledge similar to the mass Native North American genocide that saw even more knowledge of humanity lost, stolen, and hidden. This is why examining ancient sources of truth, or whatever is left of it, is always interesting, because it's hard to receive something that's been created and used as the backbone of deception. Modern Day Religion 